Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I love to watercolor all the time. It's what I do and uh, we do different projects on letsmakeart.com, a new one every single week. We sell kits, we sell art supplies, we have a subscription box, it's way fun. We break it down so no matter where you are watercoloring, you can absolutely follow along and have a wonderful painting at the end. And we're putting together just some videos to give you some background information on techniques, materials, tips, all of this stuff, so you just feel more comfortable painting with, along with us. Now this video we're going to focus on techniques with watercolor. So um, there's two main techniques in watercolor that are super important. The first one is called wet on wet, and that is exactly what it sounds like, where essentially you're touching one wet area with another wet area. And then the second technique is called wet on dry. That is exactly how it sounds. You will be putting something wet on something dry. So I'm just gonna kinda go over those techniques and um, give you guys some background information. So when you are using your wet on wet technique, there are a few different ways that you can do it. So, and using these techniques, we're actually going to um, make a few things. Also, this is Keenan. You can't see him, but he's running all the cameras. I'm here. <laughs> You're going to hear him. He'll ask questions if he has any. He's going to tell me where to look and if I like need to move or something. If I have any questions. If you have any. <laughs> so the first technique that I'm going to show you how to do is a value change. And we're going to use, uh, we're going to create a value change by using a wet on, wet, on wet technique, which is pulling color. So. A value change, first off, if you don't know, is basically um, a, a light to a dark. So value is just the lightness or darkness of a color. And a value change is when you go from dark to light. That's what we're going to do. So in order to do that, I want you to grab a brush, any brush. I'm going to use my round 10. And you're going to pick up some water. Now, how much water you have on your brush is really important with watercolor. Um, a lot of the times, beginners will use very little water, so they're only picking up paint and they have a really rough texture because they're treating the paint almost like acrylic and you do not want to do that. Um, or you have too much water and if you have too much water then it starts to pool on your paper and that is not what you want to do. So what I like to do is I get my brush wet but then I hit it off the side to get rid of that excess water. So it's moist but it's not dripping. That's the goal. So I have my brush, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna fill it up with paint. Now this is liquid watercolor. We went over the different types of watercolor in our materials video. I'm gonna be using both tube and liquid watercolors. So if you have questions on those, just go watch that video. We kind of explain the difference. So I'm gonna fill up my brush with paint. Okay, so to do this value change, it's always, for me, it's easier to start off dark and then get lighter. Some people are opposite. Sometimes it's easier for them to start lighter and then make it darker. Play with it, see what works for you, but I'm gonna start off dark. So I'm gonna fill my paint with, my brush with paint. With watercolor, the darker value means more paint and less water. So I have it nice and full with paint. I'm going to make my little rectangle here, okay? Then I'm going to just swish my brush a couple of times to get a little more water on there. I'm gonna start off right where I left off. I'm gonna pull. So already it's a lighter color. I'm gonna swish again. Pull, lighter, swish again. And it needs to keep on getting lighter to the point where the color is like almost barely there. So this is essentially just like water now. So now I have a nice value change, nice and dark all the way to this barely there purple, which is exactly what we want. And in any painting, you want to have this strong value because value is actually how you communicate form. So um, just to give you an example, if I do a circle, and it's all one value, right? There's no darker highlights on this circle it's pretty flat, it's two dimensional. But if I take a circle, or if I take my paint, and let's say I draw a circle, I leave an area for a highlight, 
I put it mid and then I'm going to grab some other color for shadow. Kind of blend that out so it's a smooth transition. And then this is going to be like a nice highlight already, even though this already looks like more of a three dimensional space than this. They're the same shape, but this one just has a larger value range. It has a highlight, it has a midtone, it has a dark value, and that is what is giving us dimension. That is what is giving us form. You see that, Keenan? I do see that. Is it coming across? It, I think it does. I changed the <laughs> angle a little bit and it's really good. So um, keep that in mind. If you're painting something and you're like, man, this just seems really flat. I don't know why it's doing that. It could just be that your value range is not where it should be. So kind of look at where your darks are and where your highlights are and where your midtones are and make sure you kind of have that range. Now, the thing with this polling method that I want you to keep in mind is let's say I do that. Okay, let's say I'm doing that same thing where I put in my dark and then I add a little bit of color now, um, if I work it back and forth like this, then that pigment is going to evenly spread across the water and I'm going to lose my value change. So whenever you're trying to do a value change like this, you don't want to work it back and forth across the entire space because it's going to come and kind of evenly blend out. And that's not what we're looking for with value changes. We want a strong change of dark to light, almost like an ombre. However, um, values and even washes are not a bad thing. You absolutely want to use those too. So we're going to go over how to make those as well. Now I'm going to say wash and you're going to be like, what is a wash? A wash is just a layer of transparent color. So this is a wash right here. This is a wash right here. That's a wash. Um, so, but we're going to go over a light wash, a medium wash and a dark wash. So again, with watercolor, uh, it's transparent. So if you want a color to be lighter, all you have to do is add water to it. Now we kind of went over the color wheel in another video. We talked about the different values you can get from one color. Um, but basically what you want to keep in mind is if you want the color to be lighter, you're not going to add white. You are going to add water. That's going to make it more transparent. Let the paper show through and give you that nice light color. So if I want to make a dark wash, that means I'm going to have more paint on my paper. Now here I'm going to use two paints here. So I'm making sure my brush is wet, but I'm also making sure I'm picking up a lot of pigment. And I'm just going to make just a rectangle. And I'm going to work it back and forth so it's kind of even. So this is a dark value right here. And the reason why it's dark is it's strong in color, but also the paper is not as transparent. So it's not uh, as transparent as a light layer. Now to get a medium wash, I'm going to have kind of more. So this one was more paint and less water. A medium wash kind of has even amount of water and paint. So that's going to be this guy right here. And again, to make it smooth so you don't have brush lines, I just work it back and forth. And it's just going to even out. So there's a medium. Does knowing how much paint and water come with more practice? Or do you, mm -hmm. that's all that is? It's all it is. So if you're just like, I'm not really sure how much paint and how much water I should have, it will just become more um, apparent to you the more you paint. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I can say, which is not super helpful. But just keep in mind that like, for example, if really all you have to know is that if you want it lighter, you just need to add more water. So if you paint and you're like, that's way too dark, it's not very transparent, I want a lighter color, all you need to do is add some water. So I'm going to make an even lighter value with this and I'm just going to make sure I have more water on my paintbrush and a little bit less paint. I'm just going to work it back and forth so it's nice and even. And there's a light wash. And you could even probably go lighter than that. Yeah, look at that. I can get nice and light. And with watercolor, what you want to keep in mind is, um, I think what's really beautiful about it is sometimes it's so subtle. And that's, 
you sometimes just need a really subtle wash of something to give you the hint of something that's there. Not everything you paint needs to be this dark because this isn't acrylic, this isn't oil. Sometimes we want the softness and the subtleness that watercolor brings. And at first, when you put this color down, you're like, that's barely there. But this absolutely stands on its own. If I cover up these other colors, you can absolutely see that mark. So don't be afraid to really use the light. Don't be afraid to use the dark. Don't be afraid, afraid to use the light. It's important to use both in order to have a nice, full, three-dimensional painting. So the next technique that we're gonna go over, so that was kind of more of a pulling technique that we use to get a value change. Now we can also pull to get a color change. So to do that is it's essentially gonna be the same thing um, I'm going to start off with some blue. Actually, no. I'm going to start off with red. Okay, I'm going to start off with some red. Also, just a little tip for you guys. Um, it's really nice to have two watercolor cups next to you. And the reason for that is you can use one to clean your brush and then one to grab clean water. As you can tell, I'm not very good at doing that because both of my waters are dirty. <laughs> and that's because when I'm painting, I just get excited and I dip it in whatever cup. However, I'm trying to be better about it. So um, if you can be a little bit more aware than I am, um, try and use one cup just for rinsing your brush and then just use the other cup for picking up water, <laughs> okay? I'm gonna just keep on going though because that's me, you know what I mean? <laughs> Can't be mad about it. I live on the edge. Oh. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> so I'm going to try and be mindful and use this cup for rinsing. Okay, Keenan, watch me on it. Uh, I will try. Okay, great. So I'm going to start off with my red and I'm going to pick up um, a bunch of color and I'm going to do a swatch just like that. And then instead of grabbing water to make it lighter, I'm going to grab some yellow. So you can see it started to turn orange. And then I'm gonna grab some more yellow. And it has more of a yellow hint. And then if you start to see that it's getting rough and you need to re-wet your brush, do so. And then pick up some more paint. So this is a great um, exercise to do if you want to go between two colors and see how many tones you can get in between. So this is more of a yellow. This is pretty much pure yellow. So just kind of keep on going until you're getting that pure color. So that is being able to do kind of a, a soft color change um, between two colors. Um, using that pulling method of just picking up new color, going across, spreading it. Um, you can even go back and work in a couple places if it seems too choppy to you. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So um, that's a really fun one to do. That's also really great if you wanna know the amount of color you can get between two colors. I use red and yellow, those are primary colors. And then I was able to mix orange between those two. Um, now the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to blend colors together. So let's say I want to blend um, between, let's go ahead, we're going to use the liquid watercolors for this. I'm going to grab a little bit of scarlet and a little bit of daffodil yellow. And that's just because I like bright colors. Because they're happy. Because they're happy. They're bright. They're like yelling at me. So. What I like to do to blend colors together is I'm going to pick up my red, do my swatch, rinse my brush, pick up yellow, move it away from it so there's a space, okay? And then I'm just going to use a wet brush to blend these together in the middle. 
Now, I'm not going all the way into the red because I want some of this red to stay up here. If I start taking my brush all the way on that side, that yellow is gonna bleed over. So whatever colors you're trying to keep pure, don't touch them with this blending um, thing that we're doing right here. You're just gonna go kind of in between. And then you can kind of rinse your brush and um, if it's getting a little too crazy. But that is how you can get a nice, smooth transition between two colors is basically you're gonna keep them, um, you're gonna do a pure color, pure color, leave a space in between, and then just use a damp brush and blend in between them. Those colors are gonna mix and you're gonna get this great transition between here. Look how, look how beautiful that is, Keenan. Gorgeous, gorgeous. It's like a sunset, it's lovely. Also, look how vibrant these colors are. Are you kidding me? I love them. <laughs> okay, now the other technique that we are going to do is, um, I like to call it dropping. Um, I, think, I think it's called dripping, like the technical term actually. Let me look at it to make sure. Let me, let me look. Poking, that's the technical term, poking. Poking. Poking, I call it dropping. You can call it whatever you want. But basically, what it is, is you get an area wet on your paper and then you poke or drop in some color and it's gonna spread, it's gonna do this really cool stuff. Let me show you. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just using water. I'm going to, you can do a circle, you can do any shape you want. Just an area that's wet. I'm gonna pick up some color and then I'm just going to drop it in and it's just gonna And the longer I hold it there, the more color is gonna come out of my brush, so your drops are gonna get bigger. Or you can just do a quick little dit, and you can kind of play with that. Now this is really great because you're gonna get these spots, but they're diffused. So for example, if you are doing freckles on a flower or a person, um, you, what you would want to do is you would do get it wet and then do these because then it's going to be kind of diffused and then you can go over it when it's dry and do sharper ones. That's a great way to actually do freckles on faces because freckles on a person's skin, some of them are lighter and darker than others and that's a really easy way to communicate that just by having, letting some of them be diffused and some of them not. And you can drop in more color, like let's say if I drop in some of this pink. You can go along the edge right here and it's gonna kind of spread out. It's pretty cool. That's one of my favorite ways to add um, texture. And it doesn't even have to be clean water. Like it can be, let's say I do a wash, a soft, like light purpley wash. Let's lighten that up. I'm gonna add some more water on my brush. Lighten that up so it's a nice, soft, purpley color. And then I'm gonna pick up some strong purple and drop that in. And it's just gonna spread and bleed. So this is just a really great um, tool to use for, excuse me, for, this is a great tool to use for texture, um, just for interest. It's just gonna add some cool textures and stuff to your painting. So those are some wet on wet textures. They're really fun. A really fun exercise that you can use to kind of get used to that is you can do um, like drop or circle paintings. So for that, and this is great because it will also get you used to thin and thick lines with your, with your brushes. But let's say I, um, let's say I draw a circle And I fill it in, and you can do this with whatever shapes you want. And while it's still wet, I'm gonna grab some clean color. I'm gonna be barely touching that other circle. I'm gonna fill it in, and that color is going to start to blend over. And if you want to add more, so it's a richer, more of a blend, you can poke or drop in color from there, just like that. And then we can do this with Analogous colors, so let's say I mix a tiny bit. If I look at my color wheel, purple and red are next to each other, so they're analogous. I'm gonna mix a little bit of my red with my purple, 
and I'm going to make another circle next to it to where it's barely touching. And if you want a thin line, you're going to do it on top. And then I'm going to use the side of it to fill it in. I'm going to touch it with that wet, that wet on wet, and then I'll, I can poke in more color and let that kind of do its thing. And you can just kind of play with this, do a bunch next to each other. Let's do another one right here. If I do a circle, fill it in, and maybe I'm gonna pick some of that. So let that drop, let that spread. It's gonna do different stuff. Very fun. This is also a great exercise for you to play with color palettes and figure out what colors go good next to each other and what ones maybe shouldn't be next to each other. Maybe you wanna poke in a little extra right over here. I feel like I'm the only one losing my mind right now. What do you mean? That's really cool. <laughs> It's so cool because you're going to get some crazy textures, some beautiful colors. Like, let's even go crazy and see what it would be like if we added some orange. Yeah. First, I'm going to do my water because I just did a color one, so I'm going to do another water one that's going to barely touch that. I'm going to fill it in. It's going to bleed. It's going to do all. It's going to have. It's going to have a mind of its own. You have to embrace that with watercolor. We love it, we accept it, we go with the flow, okay? Now, some people don't like watercolor because you really have to kind of let loose and let that have control. That's okay, we gotta, do you know why I like it? Because this paint and this paper and this water is doing all of the work. I'm literally making circles and look how cool this is, look how cool this is. Yeah. It's doing that on its own. So embrace it, it's pretty cool. So now let's try an orange circle. Do my circle, I'm gonna fill it in. You can poke in some more color, put another layer on top. Yes, so cool. Now you can even do this just with one color, just the purple and the white by itself, that's gorgeous. But uh, play with it, play with different colors, see what textures you can get. And this is a great exercise, not only in the wet on wet technique, but it's also gonna show you um, how much paint and water you should kind of have on your brush while you're painting and how much paint is going to affect how much it bleeds into the other area. It's a really fun exercise and you can do this with any shapes, right? Like if I did, if I wanted to do hearts, same thing. Do a little heart, fill it in. Rinse my brush, I'm just using water. Do another little heart and then it's touching it. And if you want stronger color, blood in, you can poke it in there or drop it. I'm a dropper, personally. And then let's say I do, oh, let's do a more pink one. Hashtag Valentine's. Hashtag Valentine's. If you wanna make a Valentine's Day card, just do a bunch of these heart things on the top. It's a genius idea. It is genius. You're welcome. <laughs> For more genius ideas. For more genius ideas, go to letsmakeart.com. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do another like more purpley heart. It's gonna be barely touching it. Whoa, whoa, I didn't have a, I didn't have a nice firm grasp when my brush got a little wonky. It's okay, I'm just filling it in anyway. So that color is starting to bleed into that one. Oh, Keenan, you didn't keep track of me. Rinse in uh, my cups. I got distracted by the <laughs> No excuses. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. So I added some water in there. I'm kind of pushing the color. A lot of the times you're kind of guiding where the color is gonna go in the water. You're kind of acting like a little sheepdog with your brush. Is that a good analogy? Probably not. <laughs> just reminds me of the movie babe okay 
But this is also a great exercise in terms of how long you need to, like how quickly you need to act in order for that color to disperse into the water. For example, if I painted this and I let it sit for a few minutes and then I just like try and add clean water to it right now, see how it's not dispersing at all as opposed to this that bled out. So with watercolor timing is really important. If you want these really cool techniques, you gotta act fast. And I know it's scary to try and paint quickly, but you just gotta be like, you're a piece of paper and some paint and I'm not scared of you and I'm just gonna go. And then you're gonna get some super cool effects, things that you didn't even know you could do. So that is a really, really fun exercise to practice your wet on wet technique. Now the other technique which is super interesting is wet on dry. And I'm just going to um, kind of go over what we already painted with, because it's dry now. The wet on dry technique is really good if you're trying to do detail work. Now I love painting animals, I love painting florals, and a lot of the things such as whiskers and eyeballs and furry textures, you need to do it while it's dry because you want sharp lines. So with watercolor, if you try and do a sharp line in a wet area, it's going to diffuse like what we just saw there. It's not gonna stay, it's sharp, it's gonna soften up. But let's say I want to do some detail work that's gonna show up. I'm going to, while it's dry, I'm gonna get my brush nice and thick, and then I can draw or paint on top of that. So because this is totally dry, these shapes are keeping and maybe it would be better if I do it in the lighter area so you can see it. So this is a really fun technique. Again, animals or florals, if you're trying to do like pansies, they have really strong um, detail lines. A lot of florals do actually. So um, if you want them to be nice and sharp, then you're gonna wanna do this wet on dry technique. And it's doing those finishing details that's really gonna kinda elevate your work. And you can even work more on top of this. Let's say I let this dry, I can do a vein right on that leaf. Now I would wanna do it when this is dry because if I try and do a vein right now, it's just gonna bleed out. And it's gonna get kinda like thick and blech. So if I want a nice sharp thin line, you are going to wanna wait till it's dry. So try and use both of those techniques. I use both of them in all of my paintings. So um, kind of play with those, they're really fun, they're great with layering, all of that stuff. Okay, um, thank you so much for joining us. We kind of just went over some techniques with watercolor, super fun, super playful, wet on wet, wet on dry, all of that good stuff, blending, color changes, a lot of fun. Now we have some other videos where we go over um, materials, I kind of mentioned them earlier in the class, um, materials, paints, uh, textures, all of that stuff. So you're welcome to check those out. We also do a weekly tutorial uh, project. So if you're interested in painting so many different things, uh, you can just paint along with us. All of our videos are totally free. You can watch them on YouTube. Just Google, I think you can just search Let's Make Art on YouTube and we pop right up. I Google it all the time. Great, yeah, Google it, YouTube Let's Make Art, we're right there. And also you can watch the tutorial straight from our website, letsmakeart.com, where you can also get a majority of these art supplies. So if you don't really know where to go to get them, go to letsmakeart.com. And um, thank you so much for watching. Bye.